Michael Maguire's West Tigers almost pulled off an Easter Monday miracle. In the end, though, Brad Arthur's Eels got the job done. They're four from four to start 2021. We'll bring you that result and plenty more right here on Inside the NRL. Eels legend Peter Sterling joins us. Plus, we'll cross live to coaches Brad Arthur and Michael Maguire. The Rabbitohs and Adam Reynolds are at loggerheads over the skipper's future. But why hasn't the halfback been re-signed? And we discuss the state of the game as the gap between the best and the worst widens in season 2021. Hello and welcome to Inside the NRL. I hope you had a great weekend. I did. Why? Because there were five days of footy. I say bring it on each and every week. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Jamie Soward, Michael Chambers from the Sydney Morning Herald. Guys, I'll tell you what, Brad Arthur would have been hanging on in that second half thinking, if you drop this, boys, oh. you're in at 7am tomorrow for a big, big session. Yeah, definitely. I think in years past, uh, you know, We've seen Parramatta be good throughout the season, but then they drop those games. The teams that they should beat, when they're in OK form, you know, the last couple of weeks have had a big couple of weeks, but, yeah, they get away with a lucky win. Wasn't perfect. I was actually surprised with the Tigers. I think they've made a real improvement from last week, Newcastle. They could have easily turned that game up and lost by 50. And uh, for those that are just joining us, if you didn't see the match, the Eels got home 36-22, but there were a couple of unanswered tries there in the back end of the game. The scoreline doesn't really f reflect how tight and tense that last 40 was, hey, Michael? No, the, the Tigers were two points behind with a few minutes to go, and if that was called offside there, that Clint Gutherson, Blake Ferguson try at the end, and they were in for a ball game those last few minutes. But unfortunately for the Tigers, just onside Clint Gutherson, and uh, that was all she wrote for the, the West Tigers there this afternoon at Stadium Australia. But... I think you, look, the Eels were disappointed, but they couldn't have played... Well, they couldn't have given the, the, the Tigers more opportunities. Like, that kick-off, the start of the match, have you ever seen anything like it? Junior Paulo there dropping the ball after Ferguson slipping over. It was there for the Tigers today to win and snatch an upset, but unfortunately uh, for the Tigers, they couldn't get it done. And the Eels, as you said, Sowie, they'd be happy. Get the two points, get out of there, forget about that game and start again next week. Well, you need to win ugly if you're going to win the competition. Here's Blake Ferguson. He had a horror of an afternoon and then somehow finished with a couple of tries. It was... Yeah, you know, bizarre to watch. Jatoy Kimano, geez, he's been an impressive buy for the West Tigers. But you look at players like that, like David Nofaluma rushing in. That's a side that's trying to learn what it takes to be good every single week for 80 minutes. Last week, they get a win on the road against Newcastle. The tyres are pumped up. They come in, they start slow in this game. They work themselves back into a game. But when you're not a good team, those errors come to the fore in the crunch moments. And that there ended up costing them. But uh, as I said last week, Dewey's but was pretty good today again. Uh, him and Brooks seem to be working well together. You spoke about that crunch moment. That Gutherson kick was the last play before half time. Yeah. Huge, crucial play. And yeah, whether it was on side, it looked like he was on side. They reviewed it in the background for that uh, try towards the end. I think it's going to come up here. Uh, he's still on the ball though. Gutho is always involved. It's those little extra efforts and in the end they get the result. Well, he's pushing up there in, inside other Tigers jerseys. And that's their best style. When he's on the ball, I, I think when we've seen Parramatta play structured where they play out the back and they get to a post and it's zing, 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 that's not Parramatta. When they play a little bit of second phase, some cross angles with their big forwards and guthers and players on the ball and support, that's when they can tear you apart. So uh, his support play is one of the best in the game. Michael, we will hear from uh, Michael Maguire and Brad Arthur a little bit later on and we'll speak to Peter Sterling just about the halves and the way they play their footy. But if you were Brad Arthur and you saw Blake Ferguson celebrating <laughs> like that at the end, what do you say to him when he walks back in the sheds, given a couple of the fumbles that he had earlier in the match? Well, at least they were eight points clear with nothing on the clock remaining. But to be fair, and I think Clint Guth Gutherson summed it up well at half-time when they asked him about the match. He said, if Fergo and I can hold on to the ball, we'll, be sweet. we'll, we'll win this game. We'll be sweet because they were their own worst enemy the Eels at times during that match. I, I just think the Tigers, though, the, the thing for me about the Tigers, a 16 nil down, I thought, we're looking at a cricket score here. Yeah. It could be 50 plus. And I thought, uh-oh, this is, this is panic stations here. But they got themselves back into the game in, yeah, in a few times with back-to-back -back tries. So it's a good sign for Michael Maguire that they just, they're not giving up. So is that a blight on Parramatta, though, or a, a, or a...? Well, I mean, Parramatta have had a great win against Melbourne in those conditions. Last week, you know, they got Cronulla on the hop with all the injuries, so I think they maybe be looking forward to the next couple of weeks. They've got some big games coming up, Parramatta, so uh, for me. But what about the Tigers? Like, 
their roster overhaul is starting to take shape. And I, we did the first show, did they get their recruitment right? You said yes, I said no. I'm going to have to backtrack that a little bit because you look at Yutoi Kamanu, how he's I was, played. Hey, I like to hear Dane this. Laurie, I like to hear this. And you, Sally. Did Dane you say Laurie, I was right? Yeah, for once. It doesn't happen <laughs> often. But Dane Laurie's been fantastic. He, now the, the job is they've got those guys there. It's the consistency. Can Luke Brooks and Dewey keep getting better? Can Jacob Little keep getting better to match what Dane Laurie started the year? Because that, to me, looks like a spine that could grow together. I just worried about the rest of the team whether they were going to be able to play the best footy. And, and that's from speaking to people in and around the Tigers the concern so much wasn't so much this year about obviously they want to play the finals football but there is a general feeling that they have done st something right over the past 12 months with their recruitment as you mentioned Dane Laurie Tokamanu Sean Bloor's a good player they've signed Sean Bloor he's obviously injured at the moment a very good player so they're getting the pieces together for bargain buys to build towards the future now they need their big name signings their high profile signings your Luke Brooks your Moses M buys your Adam Dewey's they need to perform at a level to challenge the likes of Parramatta because at the moment you can't rely on the young kids to do the job week in, week out. They'll show glimpses of brilliance, but they're not going to win you consistent football games. So well, I think they're moving in the right direction, though, Sally. That word consistent, though, that's the issue because you sat here in round one and said they got their recruitment right. Two weeks later, you said, I've got egg on my face because I thought they'd go better against the Roosters and Raiders. And now Sally's saying, I've got egg on my face because I actually agree with you in, in yeah. week one. They're so up and down, the Tigers. It's the, the narrative and the roller coaster that Michael Maguire sat after the game against the Titans last year and said, I'm over the ups and downs of this club. How do they fix the ups and downs? That game summed it up. Yeah, well, they, they, will... st they start to get people that aren't off contract just for the sake of being off contract. Like They start to get the young guys, the next crop coming through, so that in a year or two's time, and as a coach, you may not be in that position to see that through, but right now, you talk your money's going to be there for the next five years. Dane Laurie might be a fullback for the next ten years. Yeah, maybe they start to help unlock Luke Brooks and his running game, and then Dewey and his kicking game today was fantastic. So, as I said, you know, it's probably a little bit better than what I thought. But at the end of the day, we're judged on wins and losses, and it was a slow start. They fought hard, but they still lost the game. I'll tell you what, we talk about buys and good buys. What about Isaiah Papali? For Paramount. Fantastic. He's been he took a chance. Four weeks. He took a chance because he was at the Warriors, he was playing regular footy. He comes to Parramatta, who's a top five, six side in their premiership window to come over here for a chance because Ryan Madison and Sean Lane are the starters for that team when it's when it's full 17. But he comes over here and in the trial against the Dragons, he ripped and teared and was the best part on the field. So, um, yeah, I was uh, yeah really excited to see him play and he, he killed it against today on an edge. Where does he rank right now in terms of buys of the year? Because there's a lot of talk about David Fafida and Tino Fasu and Ma'alawi and the yeah. like. But Benji's still number one for me. I've still got Benji. I just think that's crucial. You watch them play Souths and they don't skip a beat when he comes on. He plays in the middle. He's able to be that link person. So they're always going to have attack for 80 minutes. You know, when Cam Murray went off last year, South Sydney, they lose that link person to get it to Reynolds and Walker. Yeah, I, I think Benji, you'll see the value of Benji later on in the season. I, I think I think Papa Lee's been great, obviously, the Titans boys. But Adam Fanula Blake, he's going to be a loss for... For the Warriors, he's been sensational, Huge and and not so much what he's done for the Warriors, but the hole he's left at Manly. Like that forward pack is so weak mm. right now without him, and I didn't think that we'd see such an impact of of them losing for Noah Blake. That shows a lot what he was what he meant to Manly. Yeah, and if you miss the Warriors match, for Noah Blake's injured, so he's set to miss at least a week or so. We've got some big news coming from Michael Chamis a little bit later on on Mitchell Pearce and his uh, injured pack as well. Uh, Reed Marnie. Sowie. Mm -hmm. uh, at the back end of last year, I guess people were questioning whether he was the number nine to, as part of that eel spine to take them to the next level. But the way he started this year, how much impact has he had on their four and O start? He's the number nine to take him forward. It's just whether he gets his balance right of running versus passing. So, um, But I'll tell you more after this. Michael Maguire is about to speak about his loss to the Parramatta Eels, the coach right. of the West Tigers. Yeah, there is Mike Maguire sitting down right now. Obviously, he'll want uh, his team to bounce back next week. But Gallant in defeat, 36-22 against the Eels today. Let's hear from Mike Maguire. Imagine they got close, but is it a feeling of close enough? Is it good enough? Oh, I wouldn't say it's not good enough. I, I think... Um, the effort that you saw within the team was definitely what we're about. Uh, we just um, made it hard for ourselves in the first 20 minutes. Um, yeah, that's probably the disappointing part. Is that you know we, we get our start in the right order, then you know the outcome of what we put in throughout the 80 minutes is uh, the effort there is um, you know what we've talked about as a team. So we just got to execute at the right times and you know defend 
uh, for longer periods of time when they were coming at us too. So, but de definitely the first 20 was, um, you know, a big issue. But you know, we managed to fight our way back uh, throughout the game, and it was there to be taken. Um, you know, and that's the next progression for us. You're showing me how much you can score tries, but there's been a streak of conceding more than 20 points. I think it's been going for a while. Like that. Defensively, how much do you have to work? Uh, every team's working on it at the moment. I mean, obviously. You, know, you look at the score lines at the moment, they're, they're starting to go higher, but we need to make sure they're going lower. So, um, yeah, it's something that we'll look at. Um, yeah, but both parts of the game, both attack and defence, play a massive part in each other. So, you know, you've got to get uh, both in order. I thought the first half uh, in and around our attack wasn't what we um, we wanted to set out to do. And then you put pressure on yourselves. I mean, we nearly had dry down in the corner here early. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to... You know, execute that and get get the points when you go down there. Uh, that's that's the next step. What did you make of the halves today? Oh, look, they're growing and you know their combinations are coming together. I thought at times throughout the game, uh, yeah, they could get a hold of things in a different light. But we'll go through that. Adam for right boot, um, obviously working in the first half. Do you think you went away from it in the second, or did Parra just? Uh, I think they had a few more in the second half too. They just caught those ones. Um, yeah, look, you know, there's different ways of how we could have done things for sure. You know, and I'll speak to the spine around that. But you know, we could see from the game it, it was there to be able to to be taken. We just needed to execute at moments. Uh, but yeah, it's disappointing. So you're disappointed that you had a lot of possession early and you didn't get any points. Um, come up with any points and then Parramatta. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. The one thing I do know about this team is that they're, they're heading in the right direction. I mean, you're not getting the rewards at times we would have liked. Um, you know, I think you, you look at our games playing against Canberra, that's been a strong team for quite some time. You know, we, we put the right fight in there in that one. Uh, the Roosters was a disappointing one. Um, you know, we got a result last week, and now against a, a strong team that's been showing that for quite some time, we've, we've definitely mixed it. So, mixed it with them. Um, it's now about just the finer details of the game and moments of the game that, you know, if we work hard at and we focus on, then, you know, those games start to tip your way. Uh, and you go back to the possession early. You know, you've got to be able to execute those when the time's right. Uh, you know, we put ourselves into a good position with Adam's kicks and we had opportunities down there, but, you know, we've got to nail it when we get there. I think um, Paramount scored off the six again calls the first couple. First time, first three yeah. tries, I think, come off. Yeah. Six again. How, how hard are they to Well, obviously today they were pretty hard. But, yeah, you know, you've got to work hard through that. And that's part of what the game, that's what you've got to do. It's, uh, you know, being able to handle that and the resiliency. You've got to withstand that pressure when they're coming at you. Uh, there were times there when we handled it and there were times when we didn't. So, you know, that's, that's where every team needs to ch be challenged. Um, you know, when we've got the ball, we challenge. Uh, but when we don't have the ball, how do you make sure that you stop the opposition? Um, Dave Laurie, you happy with how he's tracked in that first month? He scored that much, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going well. Yeah, um, you know, he's disappointed, like all of us, uh, you know, because he's uh, really progressing in the way he's playing. But, you know, the art now is to be able to, you know, look at what we need to do and execute that under the pressures that we held there today. So, um, yeah, I reckon he'll get a lot out of that game. What about Luciano? Yeah. Could be a real game breaker for you? Yeah, yeah, he's. He's growing, as I keep talking about. Um, so, yeah, he's another one there that, uh, you know, is really starting to excel in his game and understand his game. And the edge on that side there is starting to really get a connection. So, you know, it's a, it's a good threat for us when we go there. Looked like there was a bit more structure there with Moses. And came on early yeah. and played in that second half, first half, sorry. What does he sort of fight when you make the edge? Yeah, well, the way the game is now with that speed of the ruck, I think that... Um, you, know, you look at the Cam Murray and the Victor Radley, and you know Moses can play that style of uh, fast, you know, up through the middle of the park. So I thought when he went on, he actually did a great job for us. You know, he really executed well and played nice and square and straight, which gives you opportunity. So when fatigue comes in, he can be um, uh, create a lot of opportunity for us. Will it be a week for week prospect with him? Imagine how you'd play him because he said during the week, you know, it feels like he could be contributing more to a team. He only got 29 last week, but tonight seemed like he was out there for a lot longer. Yeah, well, you know, from what he showed there tonight, he can definitely add a hell of a lot to the team. We know that. And, you know, it's how you go through your interchanges and how the game's being played. But, uh, you know, I thought, you know, he did a good job for us today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt.
And that was uh, Michael Maguire, the West Tigers coach there. So he said the big issue was their first 20 minutes. We hear a lot of times coaches say they've got to play for 80 minutes, but he'll get in the, the sheds and say that to his players. How do they take that forward? Well, it's about your preparation and about understanding, yeah, as a, as a player and an individual. So last week they go to Newcastle, they get an amazing win on the road, unexpected win. You bounce into training, you've had a long turnaround preparation, and then you turn up Monday afternoon and you're not ready to go. So, you know, when coaches talk about 80 minutes, your start is so important, both with the ball and without the ball. And the Tigers didn't do that today. And what makes it even more frustrating for fans and for Michael Maguire is they fight so hard to get themselves in the game that if they started that first 20 minutes a bit better, they could be on the end of two points. If you, if you break it down, and I know the results, one and three to start the year, but if you actually look at it, they've lost to the Raiders, they've lost to the Roosters, they've lost to Parramatta, in the first four, and they've beaten who they beat last week. They beat um, Newcastle. Newcastle. So at the start of the week, at the start of the year, you would have said they'd be one and three anyway. They are where we thought the West Tigers would be, right? So obviously they'd be disappointed with the start. But they go next week and play the Cowboys at Leichhardt Oval on Sunday. If they don't go and win that game, then you start to be concerned about yeah, where they're going. That's a fair point. Because they, they, they got the Rabbitohs the week after. They need to be two and three heading into that Rabbitohs game or the chances of finishing ninth this year are gone again. Sally, Michael McGuire also just said there that his halves are growing. Are they growing fast enough for your liking together? Well, a lot of pressure on Luke Brooks all the time. He's the senior playmaker there now. And uh, as I said, you know, Dewey's probably surprised me a little bit. I thought some of his kick selection uh, at times is still learning to be in that 5 eighth role. And uh, I, I just can't get away from the point that if they weren't going to make the eight last year, which they weren't, why wasn't this halves pairing put together and have six months at the back end of the year when you knew you were getting rid of Benji Marshall? We knew that contract was done. They would have been further on down the track. They would have known how to play together. And then you would have had Dane Laurie to come in and be the finishing touches on that spine. So um, Luke Brooks has still got a long way to go. I think that Dewey's probably out playing at the moment. But, you know, every week his future's on the line, <laughs> unfortunately for him. On that point, Sam, I don't think the Tigers were had anything to gain by dropping Luke Brooks, uh, sorry, Benji Marshall at the time because you would have been into the Tigers for the disrespect You're not, and no 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 you don't drop him you just say look Benji we're going in a different direction I don't think that went down very well well it didn't go down well anyway it didn't it could have gotten even worse Benji Marshall leaving the West Tigers last year was never ever going to go down well either way you put of course. it the fans would have been off you either yeah. way so you might as well just say Benji respectfully you know we need to think about the future yeah we'll pay you your contract we'll get you to do some ambassador work yeah. but yeah anyway Okay, so uh, that was the West Tigers side of things. Brad Arthur, for the fourth straight week, sits down as a winning coach. The Eels are unbeaten, to uh, second on the ladder behind the Panthers at the moment after today's 36-22 to win at Stadium Australia. We had a little closer to come. Yeah, look, it's probably in the long run, looking back on it, worked out OK. To, it's another way that we had to sort of challenge ourselves to, to get the result. Um, but yeah, just probably some too many fundamental errors in the in the second half and the lack of respect for the footy. How was your heart on the first half and were you proud of the way you sort of got his act together under the high ball? Yeah, well, that was some tremendous kicks. Um, but you know, he responded well and you know just had to move on from it. There's nothing he could do about it. It was a trial we had to move on and um, I thought he handled himself really well in the second half. Fish, so wherever any ball he dropped, he was going to move on from, from fairly quickly. Yeah, oh, look, we knew once he dropped that ball, they were going to keep coming that way. But he just had to, you know, because he dropped one doesn't mean he's going to keep dropping them. So he knows how to catch a footy. He's a he's, um, very good winger, so done his job. Uh, two, two tries, he ran for nearly 200 metres. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yep. um, that's his job to finish tries. And one of those was a really nice try to... A, a big, um, big time of the game for us, but um, he's been strong out of the backfield, and that's that's his value for us. Four from four to start the third, please. Yeah, look, it's there's some things there that we can go away, and we know we've got still got a hell of a lot of improvement in us, but um, it's tough to win week in, week out in this competition. They were up for it, the Tigers, and they they come after us, and so we had to fight and scramble and and hang on, and um, you know we've done that, so I'm pretty proud of of the effort. I guess the, the knock on you guys has been starting in the last couple of years and then falling away at times during the year. Have you seen something different this year that makes you think you're going to stay up there? Well, no, we're not playing our best footy yet. When, and we're not trying to, you know, we don't want to either at the moment, but um, there's still plenty of our game that we need to improve. 
Um, but I just think, you know, when we're under a bit of pressure, our response is different. You know, when a moment doesn't go against us, we respond better. And, it's, you know, it's just about making sure that we, um, we worry about what's coming up next and not what's happened or what's, you know, five sets away. When you say respond better, like, is it something in the body language you're seeing? Is it the way they... No, it's just our actions. It's, you know, staying right there and making sure that, you know, whatever's next, we'll, we'll be able to handle it and getting back to what works for us. How important is it to get off to a good start like you have? Oh, it was a tough competition, isn't it? You know, we um, doesn't matter how you win, you'll you'll take them as you go. And, but you know, we again we come up against the Dragons and next week. They've won three in a row. They got they're full of confidence, so we're going to be up against it again next week. You, the, um, Tigers got it within two points there. Like, how are you? I suppose, how are you feeling? They're obviously coming together. Uh, yeah, well, I'm way more confident this year in those sort of situations with the team that we've got and what I've seen from them in the pre-season. Um, and our halfback's very, very calm and controlled. And so I always believe that, you know, it would take a bit of time, but I, I believe that we'd get the result that we got. What about defensively, I think, like, was it uh, either school 24 or 22? Yeah, two of them are from drop kicks we had to defend our we got out to 16 nil and that was on the back of defending a lot of sets on our trial line so I thought it defensively we, we scrambled and we worked really hard on our trial line so they got a couple of but then the they, they were good kicks we dropped them they scored Isaiah was pretty impressive again today what's impressed you most about him in the first four weeks of years oh, you know what he's real professional I love coaching him he um just goes about his job, you know. Like he, the change wasn't until captain's run, last minute, trained all week, in, in you know, to to play a role in the middle, um, and just went, yep, just rolls with the punches. Whatever you ask him to do, he just does. Alright, Madison, VA, what was the story with him? Oh, look, he wasn't quite 100%. So um, we've got a healthy squad at the moment. It gives opportunity for everyone else and, you know, Maddo's health is important to us, but it's also important that when he comes back, he's right and he can do his job and he can, you know, play week in, week out. Is it extra caution with him considering his history with that Knox as well? Well, he wanted to play, but, you know, we just made the... He wasn't 100%, so there's no reason to play. You know, it's different to a soft hit, you know, an injury. It wasn't 100%, but that's pretty important. Is he likely to come back next or on Sunday? Or is well, we'll go through the same protocols all week and he'll train all week and if he's, if he's good to go, we'll play him. If he's not, we'll... But um, he's confident and he's um, very keen to play. Brad, you must be happy with our Maradas sort of trapped there in the centres? Yeah, he's done a great job. Don't want to leave him there forever. Um, but... He's done a really good job. I'm sure he wants to get into the thick of it. And, you know, like you see, he doesn't mind the collision part of it. So he's probably more suited in in the middle or on an edge, but, um, you know, a bit closer to the ball. But he's, he's done a great job for us. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that was Brad Arthur there. A fairly happy coach, but he doesn't give too much away, whether it's after a loss or a win. They're 4-0 to start the year, second on the ladder. Uh, they've got the Dragons, Raiders, Broncos, Bulldogs, Roosters, Michael. When's their first loss? That Raiders round six game in Canberra is going to be... Mate. That's going to be weekend. a weekend. That's going to be this a Sunday. Oh, I Dragons. couldn't ask you that question, given That's you're the part Dragons. of the, the Dragons camp. Yeah, look, look, uh, yeah, we know Parramatta's going to be a step up. And you, anytime you start the year 4-0, and they've won different ways, haven't they? They've been up for the big game against Melbourne where the execution was on. Now today, a little bit scrappy, and they still get the win. That's the important thing. And Ryan Madison touch and go at this stage, but he's a big in, regardless of when he comes back, whether it's next week against the Dragons or the week after. Dumb question, Sowie. The way Papa Lee is going, does Madison come straight in? What do you do? You think there's a, a chance that there might be a little reshuffle? reshuffle I there? think out of respect, they'd probably play Madison, but Papa Lee is outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> he's been really, really good, so they've got good depth, and that's what you need to win a comp. All right, we've got more NRL trading cards to give to our loyal viewers at home. We're asking you, who are your 3-2-1 votes going to out of that game today? So your best players, your best three. Uh, let us know by uh, heading to our Facebook page, looking at this video beneath and commenting in the comment area. The best dancers get themselves a box of NRL trading cards. All right, we've heard from Michael Maguire. We've heard from Brad Arthur. Now we hear from one of the legends of our great game, Eels legend and Channel 9 commentator Peter Sterling. Sterlo, your Eels are four from four. What have you been most impressed with about their start of the year? Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Happy belated Easter. 
um, all's good in the world, isn't it? I think we should just call the jam off now. <laughs> the Golden West Grand Final. Parramatta play Penrith. The whole of the West will just close down for a couple of months. And, uh, and that will do. But, no, nah, look, uh, I, I, I've, I've liked the way I agree with Sowie and with Brad Arthur that it's important to find different ways to win. And if you look at Parramatta's first month, they've been able to do so. Pretty scrappy second half, obviously, uh, against the West Tigers. But in the end, it was, I think, six tries to four. I'm, I know it's sort of maybe wise after the event, but I'm not a big fan of the nine-day turnaround. Mm. I know that it helps when you've got a concussion issue, as it did with, with Mitchell Moses. But, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a seven-day person. I like to get into that routine, and I just think those extra couple of days can, can drag a little bit. I'm, as I say, I'm not making excuses, but I think that just kind of showed in the second 40 minutes that Parramatta just lost their intensity, um, and maybe it's just that little bit different to prepare for a, a nine-game wait. Still, I know, four from four, obviously a great way to start the year, but in all seriousness, it'll count for nothing if we get to finals time and Parramatta don't give in a, a good showing of, you know, over the last couple of years, <laughs> bowed out into, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, losses last year. I, I just want to get your views on Brad Arthur. I know you're quite close to him. What is good enough for Brad Arthur to continue without pressure at Parramatta? Well, you know, playing finals football, you know, has to, with the squad that they've got and the roster that they have, they must play finals football. And obviously the last two seasons have been disappointing going out in, in you know, back-to-back -back sets. But, you know, Brad, when you consider where the club were five or six years ago, they've come a long way in a relatively short period of time. So we're, we're on the up. My big question mark coming into this season was could they go that, I don't want to use the cliche, but go that next step. I've seen them get into positions against good quality sides where the game is on the line at the 60, 65th minute, and too often Parramatta haven't been the team to go on and win that game. Now against Melbourne, uh, they did. And that was a huge confidence builder. Uh, they, they've won in, in different fashions in, in the other matches. But the big test for Parramatta is when the game is on the line, I call it the acid test, uh, against the quality sides. If they can win more often than not during the course of the season, that will put them in good stead when it gets to finals football. And, you know, I, I, as I say, the roster is there. I think Hipgrave and Papa Lee have been great signings. I'm a big fan of Ray Stone. I think Will Smith plays a, a wonderful foil to, to both the halves. So the, the 17 really impresses me. Uh, the only concern I possibly do have is maybe a little bit of lack of depth in the outside backs. If there's no Michael Jennings this year, you know, the fact that we've had to put Murata Niakore out into the centres for, you know, four to six, maybe longer weeks... That is a little bit of a concern that that might be the area that we were skinny in. We were skinny around the, the dummy half hooker last year, probably a little bit better served there now. Outside back is maybe a little bit of concern if we get injuries. Sterlo, this spine is settled now with Barney, Brown, Moses and Gutherson, but I think sometimes when I watch Dylan Brown, finds himself struggling to get into the game. What's your advice to a young guy like that when he has such a senior playmaking uh, ability around him in Gutherson and Moses? I'd like to see them combine a lot more, Jusawi. I, I don't want to see um, you know, Dylan Brown playing on one side and Mitchell Moses on the other. I think the, the best halves pairings throw the ball to each other during the course of matches. And if Dylan is prepared to, to move across and Mitchell you know, to come over at times so that they get that combination together, immediately it gets both players into the contest more so. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of you know left side, right side. And if you have a look at, as I say, the, the way that an Adam Reynolds and a, and a Cody Walker combine, um, I, you know, same with Jerome, Jerome Pugh and, and Cameron Munster. Uh, I, I think six passing to seven and seven passing to six gets them both in the game more. And I think that would aid both Mitchell's and Dylan's games. After all of that, where have you got Parramatta in relation to the top teams? The Penrith, uh, the South, the Melbourne Storm. Are they there or do you need to see more? Or we won't know until the back end of the year because that's that's when they're going to have to show up, right? Yeah, I, I think I need to see a little bit more. Mick's already got us in the finals. Mick Chambers. <laughs> You're 20 odd weeks away. Uh, let's enjoy the, the moment. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the test will come. And as you point out, Canberra in, a, in, in two weeks' time is going to be good. In fact, the Dragons next week, after watching them up in Newcastle, it's going to be a demolition derby in, in that middle third um, against Seals next week. I can't wait for that. So there's some big tests to come. Um, but, you know, as I said, I think the, the squad is there. I think they've learnt from where they've had a shortfall in the last couple of seasons, but the tests are still in front. Four from four 
can't do any better than that to start the season off. They've beaten everybody that's been in front of them, they, but they will need to get better. And listening to Brad, they're confident that they will. Still, I reckon I've just passed the cut-off date to ask this question. I, I, I want to talk about Origin for a second. I think we're, I think round four Origin, finishing. That's, that's three months. That, that's that's. That, I think I'm just about right. Round four. I, I, obviously, Penrith are the form team of the competition over the last two years. Luai Cleary, can we see them in the halves for New South Wales? Is that a silly thought? Oh, not at all. Especially with Luke Cleary out of the equation. Uh, I actually thought that. I know that Nathan Cleary picked up most of the man and match award match awards last weekend. I thought in the first half, when the game was was being won, I thought Jerome Luai was the best player on the, on the paddock. Uh, his combination with Kikau early in that game really set the precedent. Uh, Terrorised Daly Cherry Evans in a couple of ways, by making him you know, come up against a big man, which is difficult to do, but also working him over because he's, he's Manly's best ball player. So if you if you tie him out, it's going to lessen his, his effect. So I thought Luai did a great job. Uh, kick out was fantastic. Nathan Cleary in the second 40 minutes just took complete control. Um, and, you know, obviously at origin level, you're looking for combinations, and that's something that's high on the list for Brad Fittler. If their form continues and if, you know, they're leading the competition as they are now, uh, they'd have every right to pick the seven and the six from the side who are, who are going best in the, in the, in the league. Peter, unlike Michael, I live in the present. I don't look too far down the track. So from what you've seen over the last uh, month of footy to kick off 2021, what's your view on the state of the game? Every man and his dogs had their say on whether the gap between the best and the worst is too far. You've been around the game for so long. What's your view on it? The gap's always been big. You know, someone always runs first and someone always runs last. And, uh, you know, you go back last year, I know it was a shortened competition, only 20 rounds. But, you know, Penrith won 18 games. Brisbane and Canterbury won three. So, you know, there was a huge golf last year in a shortened competition. I think Cronulla finished in eighth position. They were three games clear of the team that ran 11th in the Tigers. So, you know, there was a golf there. What I think has been accentuated this season is that I don't think the game is necessarily any faster, but the game is uh, that the ball is in play for longer periods and that the better sides are able to build pressure more effectively and the sides who don't and or, or aren't resilient enough or don't or aren't, aren't able to uh, defend their errors and their mistakes get found out. How many games have we seen where a side has conceded three or four tries in a very short period of time, in 10 or 15 minutes, and the game is gone? The scoreboard is, is out of reach. So to me, the big well, the, the reason we're getting you know such a gulf in a lot in, in some of the score lines is the fact that the good sides are able with the ball in play more to put more pressure on the opposition. And we're finding that the teams that can't handle it are getting blown off the park. Now, none of us, want, after five rounds in this weekend of football, the average scoreline was 35, uh, 38 to five. Now, we don't, that's, we don't want that, you know, that's not entertaining. So hopefully that, you know, that will get closer, but it just means that the sides that are struggling have to be more resilient and have to work harder to be exactly that. Peter Sterling, uh, you make a lot more sense than Michael, Jamie and myself. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us on Inside the NRL and go the Mighty Eels. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. Again, happy Easter and, uh, yeah, call the gym off. Parramatta v Penrith. That'll do us. <laughs> Too easy. Uh, Peter Sterling, of course, you can catch him and the gang on Channel 9 through Thursday, Friday and Sunday. Can you believe this, bloke? <laughs> I, gay, I said I wanted the Luai Cleary. That was going to be my statement Mate. to go back on when Origin, Mate. when it was picked. Typical journalist, one-on-one oh, on one steal. Please. Referee's called six to go. That's right. unbelievable. Well, not yeah. only is he great at uh, stealing, he's great at breaking stories. Michael, uh, there was a lot of talk around Mitchell Pearce today and in the Sydney Morning Herald you've broken the news about uh, his immediate playing future. Yeah, it's not good for Mitchell Pearce. He'll miss ten weeks. He'll have to undergo an, a surgery on that torn pec that game yesterday against the Dragons in Newcastle. So we're looking at ten to twelve weeks now for Mitchell. That's round 14 at the earliest against the Rabbitohs. I'm not sure if Newcastle season will be over by then, but it, it's a it's a fair stretch. This draw they've got over the next few weeks. It's a tough draw for Newcastle, and they are decimated by injury. They get Caelan Ponga back this week. That's a huge, huge inclusion. No Tex Hoy, no Kurt Mann, David Clemmer probably 50-50 at this stage with that knee problem. 
and Mitchell Pearce gone. Oh, that, this is serious concern now for the Knights. And I wrote today in the Sydney Morning Herald, they've put a call into the Cowboys to try and get Jake Clifford to the club early. Now, of course, Jake Clifford was dropped by Todd Payton last week and didn't play first grade. So at this stage, the Cowboys are holding firm. They won't release Clifford, who has a deal with Newcastle next year. But Adam O'Brien struggling to name a 17 tomorrow for the Knights. Sowie, so Caelan Ponga likely to come back. That's what Adam O'Brien said this week. How tough is his re-entry into the game, given he's come off serious shoulder surgery, without Mitchell Pearce there, without Kurt Mann there, Tex Hoy's injured, and Blake Green's played 30 minutes after coming off an ACL? Huge. And, yeah, their season's on the line this weekend. If they lose against the Titans, their runs, I think they've got four of the top five teams over the next couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, I didn't have them in my top eight to start with at the start of the year, based off their depth around the, the sort of halves and stuff like that. And now, no Mitchell Pearce. Caelan Pong has to come in, and you may see a little bit of Caelan ball where they just pass it and hope that he comes up with, you know, some amazing plays. But it's but that's not be... the best way to use him. It's not, it? mate. It's not. But what, when you get out there in the heat of the moment, and there's no Mitchell Pearce, and, and Bradley's been he's been their best player. If the forwards aren't going forward, you're going to get to a stage where you pass it to your best player, and that's going to be Caelan Ponga. So I'd actually. Yeah, you know, if you are having trouble in the halves, I, I think Adam O'Brien would think of maybe playing Caelan at six, and just so he's got his in, he's in the front line. I know that the shoulder injury is there, but yeah, you need someone in the halves there. If you if you Blake Green looked underdone to me, you know you potentially could have Caelan and Connor Watson who room who live together, who understand each other, um, or have him you know defend at fullback. But it's a huge week for them this week. Um, Whoever loses this week, Titans Newcastle gone. For the okay, year. and they play each other in round five. So best case scenario, when Mitchell Pearce comes back in te ten weeks, where do the Knights need to be if they're in finals contention? You asking me? Yeah, look, uh, of the next ten games, how many do they need to win? They'd have to go 50-50 at least. Like anything, three and seven is not going to get the job done because there's other teams out there that are going. You look at that run, Titans if they lose, and Sharks, Panthers, Roosters, Raiders. Well, they might go 0-5 and five, and the season's done. All right, sadly for the Knights, they feature heavily in this week's Casualty Ward brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Mitchell Pearce, he's out for 10 weeks. Tex Hoy, he's out for two to four weeks with a hamstring injury. Kurt Mann will miss this week's game against the Titans after suffering a head knock. David Clemmer, we're still waiting to hear whether he's going to be right to go. Dom Young, uh, the youngster, he needs scans on his knee. Adam Fenua Blake suffered an injury against the Roosters. Satili Tupanua, a head knock. Brett Morris, of Cork, he should be right, hopefully for round five. Anthony Anthony Don and Jamal Fogarty both injured in the Titans game over the weekend. Josh Dugan, Ronaldo Molotalo uh, also injured there. Justin O'Neill, Murray Talang Talagai and we've got Nick Meaney, Lockie Lewis, Morgan Ball. That didn't look good with his shoulder injury the other day. So that's uh, this week's Casualty Ward brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I asked Peter Sterling then about the state of the game. Now, the reason why is four of the score lines through eight games of the weekend, 46-6, to 38-0, 40-6, to 48-10. Sowie, from your perspective, how concerning are those score lines? Well, still, I hit the nail on the head. You know, someone finishes last every single year. It's just more magnified by how fast the game is at the moment and you get a run of play or momentum for those teams that don't have good decision makers and you can concede the game within 15 minutes. The other thing to remember is that no reserve grade last year in, in Queensland and New South Wales. So a lot of those guys who have gone into the top 30, uh, who needed to play footy last year, who are still developing what it takes to be an NRL player from week to week, haven't had that footy. So they're still finding their feet. Now they have to do it on the, on the big stage against seasoned teams. The teams at the top all have great culture, they know what their style is, and they have great depth. The teams down the bottom that all got new coaches, are still struggling to find their culture and players and they've got players on contracts that they probably don't want there as well. So there's a lot of things that go into it. It was magnified on the weekend by the lopsided scores. I'm with Stella. I, I don't, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think we'll probably ever get a draw where the three best teams in the comp play the three worst teams in the comp in the same weekend, three games in a row. You, know, you had the obviously the, the, the Storm and the Broncos, yep. you had the Rabbits and the Dogs and obviously on Thursday night Panthers and Manly. So. The way the draws worked out, it was it was exaggerated this week. I'm I'm not fussed by. Is it short-term it pain for long-term gain? Oh. Well, no, well, okay. well, as you said, well, if every team gets their roster right with the new rules, here's what's happened. Right, right? Not. Penrith have actually got the blueprint where they've developed so many good players and youngsters and they're winning you know, games and making grand finals. The teams and clubs that don't have that stability and bringing youngsters through are struggling at the moment because they've had to buy people off contract. So that, they're, they're at the cream, so everyone's like, why can't we be like Penrith? Well, it doesn't happen overnight. This has been six, seven years in the making. But to Zach's point, he said, oh, well, if people get the roster right, 
no one's ever going to get it right. Well, you can't because eight teams are going to miss the finals every year and eight teams are going to make dud decisions because regardless of what happens, if Manly, a year ago we were saying Manly, what a great team. Des Hasler, he's got them firing. Their their salary cap's perfect. they got Tom and Jake and Cherry Evans. Now we're saying they can't run a football club. Like, if you win games of football, you're well run. If you lose, you're not well run. It's, It's black and white. And unfortunately... Eight teams are going to be duds every year. All right, let's get the opinion from two current NRL coaches in Nathan Brown and Trent Robinson. Um, I don't think it's great for the game, but I'm not, I don't know what the answer is there, you know, because I think the new rules do make for a better spectacle, you know, so and I, I like seeing uh, the game where smaller people can get an opportunity for too long. The game is dominated by all the advantages for all the bigger players. You know, there's a lot of clubs there, you know, us included, have got to work hard so we catch the top teams the way we develop our players and the way we recruit. You know, it's, that's the key to it. You know, of course, it's down to uh, the rules and then the unstructured nature, which is what you want, you, you want to see, and people are enjoying that. But the flip side is you're going to get some blowout scores. Um, so that's natural. Some teams are going to be better at unstructured than they... Um, um, than, than other teams, and that's going to blow out. Michael, I know you fancy yourself as a future administrator in this great game, so how do we, how do we fix the issue? <laughs> well, how do we fix the issue? I'm not here to fix the issues. I'm here to point out problems. That's what journalists do. Um, oh, look, I don't think it's broken. Like, Are we complaining of, about what we saw from Ryan Pappenhausen on Friday night? Like, We're going to remember that game for a long time. He scored four tries in 11 minutes. Sure, they won by 40, but did anyone expect them not to win by 40? Or well, I'm, the, I'm not too fussed. The other thing, realistically, at the start of the year, 16 teams aren't favoured to win the competition. Yeah, someone has picked to come last, someone's picked to come bottom four, and we probably know those most of the year. Like, you can see it ahead. It was just unfortunate that on one weekend we had 1,000 points scored for one way and not many the other. All right, uh, final question before we move on. Uh, which club's in the deepest hole? Bulldogs, Seagulls, Broncos, Cowboys? Cowboys. I don't like what I'm seeing from the player divide, the, the senior players. I, I just think that you keep that in house. You know, if we were to have a disagreement, we would Which never we play it out on air. We would do it behind closed doors and, and work out a way how we're going to get ourselves out of that. I don't like the whole going public stuff. I just think it creates divide. I'll say this. So we obviously we're talking about Josh Maguire and Jake Granville's comments over the last two weeks, calling them soft and whatnot. I, okay, I get it. It should be in house, right? But what example does it set that if Todd Payton, after his first game, came out publicly and bagged Jason Taumalolo? Like, if we're going to criticise the players... Yep, that's fine. He set the example from day one. I'm going to call you guys out publicly. They've just done the same thing. They've just gone back and said, you know what, we'll do the same thing. And I get it, they're not happy with the comments from some of the players, but I think Todd Payton, what he did in the first game... I think Todd's a great coach because I think what he did with the Warriors was superb, but I think he set a standard there and the players have just said, you know what... We'll call you out too. Well, he's the most honest coach, and he said last year in his time with the Warriors, I've got to be honest with them, I want them to be honest with me, and they're clearly honest in front of cameras, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, but they're, that's they're they not are. improving. They didn't play any better because a senior player called them out. I agree with what Chama said. The coach as well, like they're, they're like that. They're sitting in different change rooms at the moment. Yeah, okay. They need to blow it up and start again. They're, they're in big trouble, the Cowboys. Blow it up and start again. Uh, we can't do that here. We've got to move on to hit or miss. All right, he's been in the news over the last month or so. The Adam Reynolds contract saga will derail the Rabbitohs Premiership push in season 2021. Jamie Soward. Here, I'm sick of it. Just give him what he wants, seriously. If you win a Premiership, you deserve some sort of respect. And in a game right now that needs quality decision makers if you're to win a competition, game management, yeah, he'd be in the top three in that category. Plus, he turns four into six. There's nothing you can sit down and tell me about Adam Reynolds' game that you're worried about going forward if you're South Sydney. And if your premiership window's open this year, here's a tip. It's probably going to be open for the next two years while the number seven is on uh, Adam Reynolds' back. What's a premiership seven years ago got, got to do with a two- or three-year extension that they're looking at here? Oh, it was 2014, and he's been a great servant. But if we were going to sit here and put pressure on Mitchell Pearce and say, oh, the, night, the Roosters did the right thing moving him on because he couldn't get the job done. And you played for a club that was constantly renowned as a choker. Moved me on th- four, three okay. years after they I won played the prelims three years in a row. We talked about Brad Arthur earlier, the pressure he's under to take Param out of the next step. Adam's had three chances in a row in a prelim and didn't get the job yeah. done. I actually think it's Damien Cook that hasn't got the job done, to be personally cool. honest. Okay, so Michael, hit or miss on that point, though. Whatever it's, I said, what does that mean? Hit or miss? Miss. It, it's going to become a distraction. No, I, to... I, I don't think it's going to become a distraction unless Adam Reynolds makes it a distraction. And to be fair, Adam Reynolds did make it a distraction. He was the one who come, that came out publicly and called out the club. So it's on Adam, to be fair with you. All right, got to move on. The Sharks need to re-sign John Morris or sack him now. Another... another... 
person's future within the game yeah. that gets debated each and every week? I, I say hit. I mean, I was a bit cautious of about Des Hasler's contract with Manly because I, Manly had played awful and they hadn't shown anything. But the Cronulla Sharks have shown some resilience. They played the way that they did on the weekend. I didn't have him in my top eight to start the year. I had the Titans. But I think the way that he's got them going at the moment, their big test comes the next couple of weeks. They've got the Roosters this week. But and this, how do you recruit if you haven't got a coach, a head coach? How do you go out and pitch to someone that you might take you over the top and, and move those guys on to get fresh guys in? I'm going to say miss because there's not no like, other clubs out there. There's no club saying John Morris come and coach us right now. If there was, they need to get get their act together. I think, and I don't know 100. percent I think that the, the Sharks administration have known for some time what they want to do. Now John Morris is making it near impossible for near impossible for them to execute the plan that they had. I think they were banking on a few losses or a few, yeah, not so Great convincing performances, performances yeah. to say, you know what, we need a new coach. Fair you point. can't say that about John Morris to start the year. The Sharks have actually. What? I'm worried about this bloke. I'm he's must, he's must it. <laughs> yes, his column must have been good Monday, today. He's on, on fire. <laughs> All right, Sam Walker shows the Roosters will still finish in the top four. Michael Chamis. Yeah, hit for me. I think the Roosters still have enough talent. Forget about the Kiri not being there. They've still got James Tedesco, the Morris Twins, Joseph Manu, a forward pack, star-studded forward pack. It's still better, almost better on paper than any other team in the competition. The top four team for me, and if they don't get there, they've underachieved. I, I know they... I know they've had injuries, and they'll get them back in due course. I know Jake Friend will probably retire. Boyd Cordner might not come back. But that roster is still good enough to be a top four football team. Miss for me, I've got him coming fifth, and I think the loss of Jake Friend is huge uh, in controlling the ruck as the year goes on. But Sam Walker, I can't, I'm so excited to watch this kid play for the next 10 years. How good. Yeah, great debut. All right, speaking of great performances, there was one by the number one from the Melbourne Storm, Ryan Pappenhausen, on Friday night. Four tries in 11 minutes prompted this response from his coach. Different people got different opinions, you know. I think... Um, you know, James Tedesco has been the best fullback in the game for a bit, you know, for the last couple of years. Um, what I'd say is, is perhaps is getting closer to him, you know. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of other good fullbacks too, obviously, Tommy at, at Manly, and, um, you know, like I say, there's um, a lot of the, the teams have got, you know, got good fullbacks, but. Um, I'd say at the moment we, we, we wouldn't swap him for, for anyone without a doubt. So Craig Bellamy wouldn't swap Ryan Pappenhausen for James Tedesco. So Ryan Pappenhausen will eventually chase down James Tedesco as the game's best number one. Oh. Pit. Pit. I'm going to go there. Give me another year, though. What career? Like, at the end of their career, he's going to be better than James Tedesco? Well, they're both still playing. Oh. How nah. old is Tedesco? Like, yeah, yeah, they'll catch him eventually. Just age will get there, so they'll catch him. Yeah. I don't know. I don't mean like by speed. I mean <laughs> legit. <laughs> both got, hey, both guys have, have developed their game rapidly. Like when Tedesco went to the Roosters, he was good. Now he's great. And, you know, same with Ryan Pappenhaus. And he went down there. West Tigers let him go. He went down there for an opportunity to train under Billy Slater. And then he just turns up and wins Clive Churchill, grand final, and four tries. So um, I think there's a little bit more in Tedesco's game just at the moment. That's only a whisker, though. Okay, but eventually? No, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to do what he does and just not give an answer. Okay, the final hit or miss question for this week. The Knights should retire their high vis jerseys for the sake of Mitchell Pearce. Of course, he uh, tore his peck on the weekend. He did it in the same jersey back in 2018. Twice now. Do you know how superstitious coaches are about the jerseys that they wear? I mean, that's, that's devastating for Newcastle and Mitchell Pearce. But Ivan Cleary, he loves the pink jerseys. The win rate that the Panthers have got in the pink jerseys, like that's why they're in them all the time. So, uh, yeah, I know, I don't think they'll retire them, the high vis, but yeah, it's probably Should they? miss marketing. Miss. Did you create that question? Marketing. No, it was my producer. Yeah, marketing no. 101. Miss, no, no, miss for them. I, I don't do superstition. I don't do these jinxing things. I just play the game. Okay, all right. Speaking of uh, playing games, uh, champ or chump time, and it's your week, Jamie. Yeah, I went uh, chump this week. You want to go chump first or champ? Let's start. Let's start on a high. Okay, let's start on a high. Champ uh, is the uh, Mossy Masoy fundraiser. Everyone's getting behind Mas uh, Mossy Masoy. Obviously, you know, struck by tragedy over there in the UK. So all the NRL players, all the Super League players are getting behind donating money. So stand for Mossy Masoy. You can go on there and donate uh, on his website. At menofleague.com. Yep. Yep. yep, so that's uh, the South Sydney Rabbitohs getting behind it, wearing the wigs. 
Um, I think it's a fantastic course. $180,000 raised so far across the UK and Australia in just one weekend. We stand uh, for Mossy, uh, of, yeah, uh, campaign, menofleague.com for more donations and your chump. My chump this week, seriously, the goalpost at Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, Zach Lomax is going for a record. This, you tell me right now this does not go over the post and I, I won't be back. I mean, have a look at this. He strikes it. Beautiful. Thank you. Two points. And the referees have waved it away. It's all right. He only had a streak of 25 going. Uh, the goal-kicking coach wasn't happy with that. <laughs> um, he's up where he's supposed to be. I, I think that they need to make the post higher. Yeah, it said on the records he kicked seven from seven. It, ridiculous. I think the, the goal-kicking coach maybe needs to te teach their students to kick a little bit lower. We're 25 from 26. We're going all right. Well, that's, we always aim for perfection, Jamie. <laughs> all right. Hey, as... just, just, sorry. Just Hang on, is that, is that 10 in the bin or is, is that, that time no, I'm out? I'm calling time out. I, I, I like this segment, Champ or Chump, and I just need to... I know you love Easter, Zaki, but I just need to point out something that happened during the week because I, I think you are a chump. I do. Here we go. I, I've seen secret vision of you earlier in the week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> A little yeah. Easter Bunny Zach. A bit of carry on. <laughs> this is just turning into a stitch up each week on this show. Is this what you do between Mondays? Monday. Well, we'll try and have a bit of fun. Should, I was juggling Easter eggs and I was no good, so that didn't make the cut. Yeah, no, I'm look, really impressed, mate. I'm actually... It's Susan Stitch, you up there. Well done. I'm your best, mate. No, you I'm you really might not be impressed. back here next week, and <laughs> neither will I. <laughs> but Neve Owens will be in this hot seat tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, rather, uh, for NRL teams alongside <laughs> Brett Kamali and Robbie Farrar, 3.50, 5pm Eastern Standard Time. Right here on NRL.com, they'll bring you all the latest team news ahead of round five. The official lineups drop at 4 p.m. You are so chuffed with Mate, yourself for throwing me under the bus. I'll tell you what, I'll be hopping to that tomorrow. I'll look forward to watching yeah. the team. It's great. Well, I've got to hop home, uh, but before we say goodbye, we'll leave you this. The candidates for the Drinkwise drink -wise Tries of the Week. Kick. He'll get a terrific bounce. Scott Crichton coming out after it, but he's gone the other way. A little soccer reaching out and scoring. It's going to be Capewell. Kurt Capewell with the try. Sit back and enjoy the skills on display tonight. And uh, putting that into practice. Williams, flat ball, straight through. Whitehead, Croker in support. Croker for the corner, then links up with Rapana. Oh, that's a beautiful try. That's a gorgeous try. That's a catwalk try from the Canberra Raiders. Good. To go Hines, ball bounces back. Hughes has got it. He hasn't restarted the count. Here's Bromwich now. Jesse Pappenhausen around the back. Munster with a kick ahead. He'll score. No way. Well, this is backyard footy at its best. Yeah, I think it's a bump. Oh, charge down. Yes, sir. It's rolling towards the sideline and picked up. What a play. Tarek Sims. It's the play of the season so far. Charge down number two and he scores from it. <laughs>